were the rowers, I was the guy, you know, calling the stroke, stroke. Okay. So, let's talk about leap. What we did was we said, look, of that 430 or 500, let's just target half of that. I don't want to, you know, let's just start with a small group. And we talked about, <coughs> excuse me, um, really those top 20%, um, or the top half. And we said, let's look at emerging and future leaders, and let's make sure that A, we develop higher order leadership skills. Um, it's really a, a career stage preparation for them to take on additional responsibility and complexity. We wanted to create now a group of peer mentors. Um, again, put yourself in, in our shoes. We had very strong, fiercely independent companies. We weren't talking to each other. The way our minds were working at that time were, I'm Bank of the Philippine Islands. I've got my own shareholders. Um, why are you going to tell, take, start getting people from me or training my people when these are mine? And that, that was very pervasive. So we needed to break those barriers, those silos, and create a lot of um, those, those peer mentors and foster stronger relationships and collaboration. These were all new terms for us. Uh, we had never really, like I said, because the whole thinking was we had independent um, boards and shareholders. Just to give you an idea, we just launched a CRM program project, which I'm leading, um, for the group. And I had to sign NDAs with each of the companies, non-disclosure agreements. And these are all related companies, yet I needed to sign individual NDAs just so that we would share customer information. Opportunities to practice new approaches. Uh, and really, one of the things, and I think Jennifer said this, is that we needed to change the culture of one to of lifelong learning. That leadership and learning go together. One cannot be a leader if just said, well, I've been through that, I've been through MBA, I've been through my, you know, and I'm done and now I can lead. We needed to, ha to have that whole element of self-reflection and humility, really, uh, in making sure that our leaders understood that for them to be effective, they have to also constantly learn. So, we developed LEAP. We had very clear ideas of what we wanted to do. We wanted a world-class EMBA program, which we couldn't afford to send you know, everybody, those 200 people to Harvard or to Stanford or whatever. And so we reached out. We started, I started with IMD, I went to INSEAD, um, I went to Stanford, I went to Harvard, and we ended up with Harvard Business School. However, what we challenged Harvard was, I said, I did not want canned webinars. I wanted live professors talking to our class via video and actually doing a lecture and case studies on a live feed. And I said, oh, we, don't, we haven't done that yet. And I said, well, we have the technology and we should be able to do this. So we actually helped them develop this platform which they're now using, called, they, they now call Leadership Direct. Um, but basically, we designed a tailored curriculum with them, uh, and we developed a platform to actually deliver the courseware um, um, via video. So I have high, um, HBS faculty that are actually conducting our sessions once a week, um, both from a lecture and cases. We have immediate workplace applications after that. After two hours with Harvard, and I'll show you the, a typical day with us but we have immediate workplace applications so that we can actually immediately apply whatever the case or the learning was to a workplace situation. And they actually get to solve burning issues or business issues. The fourth element that we have is we actually said, if we were going to build, to, to change and, and grow transformational leaders, they need to have a strong assessment tool to tell them how they are. Again, in a culture, in, a, in, a, in an organization that never had 360s or feedback, this was new. And we, after a long search, and this is where I first met Cliff, um, we decided, and Cliff actually, with, with his advice, um, you know, opened or introduced me to the leadership circle, I met Roma, uh, and we said, let's go for it. Um, we thought the same 
um, as Jennifer said, it, and, and as Roma said in her introduction, it was the most holistic um, and complete assessment tool we've ever seen. And so we, we went with the leadership circle. The last element is that they actually, even after our LEAP program and after their coursework, they actually are asked to spend the next three months on building something new. And it need not be new lands, but it's actually looking at existing things with new eyes, as Jennifer said. It's many times there's so many white space in between that have nuggets of opportunities for us that those new eyes are, have, and I'll share with you some of those stories, that those new eyes have actually brought us significant benefits. So quickly, we have an 18-week program with LEAP. First two hours are with Harvard um, professors. And like I said, the next two hours are with me. I basically facilitate each session every week for the last two years, two and a half years. Um, and I work with the leadership teams around the group solving business problems. A case in point, just last week, we had a new mall that was opened up in, where, near where we live, um, south of Manila. Beautiful mall, nice restaurants and all of that. So I asked everybody, how many have been to the Alabang Town Center? And then half the people in the room raised their hands. And I said, what's the biggest thing that you remember of the mall? And the number one thing that came up, parking is hell. They said, we can't find parking. It's confusing and all of that. So I gave the group and said, OK, for you guys to raise your hand about Alabang Town Center and have been there, problem solve it. What do we need to do about parking? And so they actually roll up their sleeves and they get to something. And then they actually come up with recommendations, which we now give to the malls group. But this is what makes it real. It's this actual immediate um, um, implementation or, or execution of ideas that they had just heard the first two hours of the day and now saying, what do we need to do to solve a business issue? That's what makes the whole learning real. They spend about 8 to 12 hours a week in case studies and discussions and interviews in coursework, um, but that's all part of it. The most important for me, though, is the 360, because like I said, it gives them the mirror to see um, who's, who's out there, how, are, how, are, how am I seen by my peers, by my bosses, by my subordinates. This is a view that they've never had of themselves. And to do that, we actually had to go through a certification process, and I'll show you in, uh, in a minute how many coaches we have in, uh, and, and resources. And like I said, the other feature is that we have a capstone project. They have three months within which to come up with it, and at the end of the three months, they present to the group chairman and the group CEO, COO. So they're in it because they think it's important enough for us to do. <clears throat> so here's the typical 18 weeks. But what's more important, like I said, is that we have that leadership circle um, assessment uh, process. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here's how a classroom looks like. Um, and I was telling you about the um, Professor is on the left. Her slides are on the right. This is Professor Linda Applegate of Harvard Business School. Uh, and she's talking, I think, here about um, um, creating a, um, a customer-centric culture. Um, that's our ch group chairman. This is our head of corporate strategy. Um, so they actually just, when they have free time, they show up. And that's the best way to catch the attention of the participants, is our CEO just drops in and just all of a sudden gets, you know, <laughs> participates. Really, why did we choose a leadership circle? Um, as Jennifer said, a lot of the learning so far has been informational. Uh, we needed, we were, all, we were already set, we had already set out to do that we needed a transformational leadership development program. And if we were just going to stick with the usual LDPs, you know, we've got lectures, cases, etc., cetera, um, that wasn't going to cut it. We needed to have a program where people can actually see what they need to do to change. We needed the transformational learning. So it was that lack of inner work focus that was, was missing. 
that action learning that I talk about, the immediate two-hour application of whatever cases we did, they actually spend an hour discussing a problem. And then they come back with the next hour, sort of like sharing it. And, and everybody's critiquing, you know, did you think of this? What about this? So there's actual impact. And like I said, they take it back. Um, the CEOs have brown bag lunches with them after every module. So that then the CEOs, you know, so the guys in, so Tony Aquino, our chairman of our CEO of Ayala Land, has a brown bag lunch with the lead participants every so often to say, okay, what have you learned? How can we apply it? What do we need to do to change? So there's that whole integration with, with how we're doing business. And that's, the, the, and that's what I was saying. We, we lack the peer-to-peer -peer and the 360 feedback. Remember, I talked about culture. And as Jennifer said, we can, it's great if we could just have, you know, here's culture. We're going to go from A to B, and in seven months, we're there. Um, we, need, we knew it was more than that. We needed to elicit, elicit feedback from peers, encourage diversity, um, develop a culture of innovation. So all of this was in our wish list. And so um, LEAP and the TLC is, in, uh, is really integrated. We have a strategic partnership with them. We've integrated them. To date, we have had 168 profiles over five cohorts. And we have certified coaches. Um, 14 of us are certified. And another 20 are there as resources for the group. So this is the best part. That's the procedural thing. That's what we did. What do we have to show? You saw this. These were our aspirations. Um, and I think we've delivered on a few of them. We're still work in progress on, 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 on others. But I think the strongest one has really been the relationships and collaborations and the peer mentors, um, and as well as the, pra the ab ability to practice new approaches to do the way we do things. What we've seen so far, we have seen more inclusive managers. We have seen people now, especially the lower levels of managers, Remember that uh, I said one down, two downs? Uh, we're, we had one batch of one downs, and then we've so far had four batches of two downs. And the lower we get in the, among those two downs, the more open they are to be more inclusive. Um, I guess the less at risk for them. Um, they're the ones asking the questions. They're open to new They're criticizing their own decisions, um, which is refreshing. Um, just the fact that they're saying, you know, we shouldn't have done it this way. Had we, do, had we um, if we were to ask us how we would do it, we'd do it very differently. So they're more open about what's wrong. There's greater consciousness for competitors. People are now visit. Again, before our culture was build it and they shall come. Now it's okay. What's our competitors doing? You know, have you been to this latest mall? Have you been to this uh, this new facility? Um, do you know that this, um, this, this phone company has just offered this package? What are we going to do about it? So there's a lot more respect now for customers, uh, for competitors, and of course, customers. I mentioned already the regular dialogues with CEOs um, and some of these other as well. Cross-functional cooperation, cross-company. Like I said, we never would have were doing that, but now there's a lot more cooperation. And I mentioned, um, as an example, uh, just this whole CRM business analytics project that I'm chairing for the group. Um, it's an example of cross-company synergies. One of the first things I did in HR was I created a, an incentive program just for our employees. And I told our, our CEOs, we have 55,000 employees. We should do a better job of selling to ourselves. What a concept. And so we started a program, which I said, it wasn't about benefits or, or, or discounts. It was about how can we serve just our internal customers better, our employees. And just to share with you, because of that, um, in the first year we implemented it in 2009, we generated 880 million pesos, which is about $20 million of intra-group sales. The next year that went up to 40 million. The next year that went up to $60 million, um, just on selling to our own customers. And so I said, hey, if we can do that to our customers, we can do that to our premium clients, right? Um, but again, none of this was taking place. Also, in terms of accelerated development, um, we've seen a, an increased velocity of promotions. Um, and maybe to give you an example of that, let me talk about this 
Um, this, you can capture that in this next bullet. Um, the, the chairman and the, the CEO of BPI asked me, he said, JP, can you sit through our strategic planning session? This was last year in 2011. We have a three-day session. I'd want you to be there on the last day, but I just want you to sit and observe. It's hard for me to do. <laughs> so I sat from 8 till 3, just taking notes. At 3 o'clock, Gigi Montinola, our CEO, says, OK, JP, you've been quiet. I said, yes, I've been quiet because you've told me to zip it. Um, so I said, what, what struck you most from today? I looked at my notes and I said, do you know that since 8 o'clock this morning, I heard 78 times the word that we can't move on a successor because he wasn't ready. I said 78 times we heard that today. So I said, Gigi, how many of us were given the chance by our bosses when we were in our late 20s or early 30s, the opportunity to run something, even if they didn't have full information, but they had the, the gut to say, he's going to be a good leader. So I said, I think we should now step aside and perhaps do two things. One is, if you have an identified successor, let's give them the job earlier. Second, what that does is that whoever's still there and still has six months or 12 months or 18 months left before retirement, we can pull them off the line and get them to do the projects we've always wanted to do but never had the bandwidth to do. And so that's what we call the face retirement. And so what's happening now is some of our group heads, our EVPs and SVPs, are now off the line. We've, we've promoted them the next, gen, the next levels. And these SVPs and EVPs are doing the fun projects. They're reinventing the whole banking financial technology. Um, or they're looking at uh, revamping the store, uh, the, the fronts of the bank. Um, they're putting kiosks. They're doing, you know, they're doing all of these things that we always said we wanted to do, but like I said, never had the bandwidth to do. But what it's done is it's accelerated that whole leadership development pipeline for us. More cross-company movements than any time in previous history. And just quickly, what we're hearing, I'll do this very quick, because I'm out of time. Ayala Land is the strongest believer. So far, they have put in 60 people through LEAP out of the 160. And some from our managers. These are from the managers of our participants. I think you can get the flavor that um, even they are seeing a change in how some of these managers are actually now um, leading their teams. And from the participants themselves, It's about letting go. I've always had this philosophy, and I, I share with it in Leap. I said, I'm one of the lazy leaders. I said, why, why so? And I said, because I always like to hire the best people and get out of the way. Right? Because when you have the best leader they can, and let them do what they want to do, then all you do is sit back and look good. And I said, many of us don't let go enough. Most of us don't trust enough, and I think that's what we need to do um, in terms of leadership and, and developing the next generation of leaders. So I'm just running through this, but I think you get the drift. I think what's more important is some of the projects we've implemented, and I'll go through this quickly. In Globe Telecom, as a result of LEAP, they've redesigned all their front-end stores. We've designed 65 stores to date. And same store sales in the first year of implementation has grown by an average of 45% sales growth year on year and 75% more cost, uh, customer traffic. This was a LEAP project. BPI, they rebranded. This was a LEAP project as well. They rebranded, and their tagline now is, let's make it easy. Just a simple statement after Bank of the Philippine Islands, let's make it easy. This was a LEAP project. They added two of their five million customers in the last two years. Ayala Land, they cut down their project approval cycle. It used to be 180 days to get any project approved. This is from the time we say we identify, we have a piece of land to what it's going to look like. 
180 days, including the investment decisions. That's, down, that's now down to 70, and they want to cut it further to 50. And what that's done is that it now has increased or accelerated the number of projects we're approving. IMI used to be organized by geographies. We had six plants in China, uh, three plants in the US, six plants in the Philippines, all, all headed by geographies. What we now have um, are sectors. So we have an automotive group, we have a consumer electronics group, um, we have a mobile phone group, uh, and they're all co more customer driven, customer centric. This Ayala Privilege Exclusives, a, a group of the LEAP guys are from Cebu, which for those who've been to the Philippines, the second largest city. And they said, you know what? We have a small enough community here. We'll invite all our premier um, clients to a cocktail party and give them some freebies in exchange for, for new business. What a concept, right? Simple enough. In two hours of, of the cocktail party, they generated $3 million in new business just by putting all our privileged clients together, premier clients together, and basically saying, we value your relationship, give us more business, and here's what we have to offer. We got $3 million in two hours' work. There's a lot more new projects. Ayala Leasing is looking at integrating project planning into future mixed-use development. Ayala Residential is saying, you know what, when we sell a condo of 40 stories or 50 stories, about 10% remains in inventory, and we usually sell it at a fire sale. These are the units that don't have a view or, you know, there's not quite red. I said, why don't we just keep it and lease it? That's their project. So they're now going to the leasing business. This is a new business as well. Remember what, what Jennifer said. It's not so much the new lands, but it's looking with what, what you have with new eyes. And I think that's what Leap has brought. It's that fresh perspective into our businesses. I like the last one most. We've now offered what we call Banco, which is the Philippine term for bank, generic as it is. It's a joint venture between Globe, the bank, and Ella Land. And what it is is using mobile phones to pay their mortgages um, into buying their real estate. Um, and what we're finding is that we have a much better um, collection rate and collection efficiency using mobile phones for the bottom of the pyramid. So how did we all make it work? I said, first we had to face our demons. We knew it was a, high, a hard road ahead, um, that we needed to climb. Um, we didn't mince words, we took stock of what we needed to do, and we faced the facts. We built the foundation vision of what we wanted, where we wanted to go. Like I said, we had very clear ideas. We wanted a 360, we wanted a, a, a tailored curriculum, we wanted live um, professors, we wanted um, a, a, a application learning, we wanted a capstone. We were very clear on what we wanted. You saw we have very strong support from our group chairman and our group management committee strong sponsorship from the CEOs and the HR heads. Our HR heads actually take turns, along with me, facilitating each session each week. The selection was based on, on, on succession and career development reviews, so that we were very deliberate as to who was selected and even the, co the composition of the cohort, because we felt that we needed to drive the diversity. And lastly, like I said, it was that whole integrated approach, the graphic that we have there. I think at the end of the day, um, I was asked yesterday, you know, the TLC, it was integral into this. Um, I think it's because the TLC that we've seen this, the, the results happen as quickly as they have. Maybe without the TLC, we would have eventually got there. But I think just that mirror that, 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 that we put in front of them.